That's from Rick and Morty. Okay, so, Great Kent, um, the rise of mercantilism. This is some information they won't tell you in school, okay? This is some information I did some research for. But prior to what I used to add in the sources for my information on my PowerPoints, right? But I'll get this, okay. So, this first point, something very strange happened in the year 600. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little history on that. Okay, um, the Arab world in the year 600, like between 570 to 630, all of a sudden became united. Okay, and does anyone want to take a guess at what united them? Religion. Religion, right? Islam. Okay. Does it say that anywhere? It doesn't. Oh, I should have asked you kids which religion. Okay. Which religion? You are listening. Muslim isn't a religion. Islam is the religion, right? So, so if we go back two slides, let me just show you real quick. In between the Roman and the, I forget the other empire here. I think I have the name somewhere. There's two empires here. In the middle was the Arab world, which prior to Islam was very disjointed. These tribes were not connected and they were constantly warring with one another. They engaged in gambling, in warfare, in, in, in infanticide. So they would bury their infant daughters on birth because they didn't want baby girls. They were alcoholics. They, they were real degenerates right? at that time. Sure, they might have had their, their, some pros as well, but they, they, were, they were not connected. Okay. So by the time that Islam comes around and, and you know Islam is now the ruling narrative for this group of people, they're unified, all of a sudden they become very powerful. Okay, they become very they're in a very good position, right? Like again, we saw on that world map. They are in the middle of the silk silk route. Okay. They are a connection to Asia, to Europe, to Africa. So a lot of goods, a lot of valuable things, boys in the back, passed through the Arab world, which allowed them a great de degree of control. Okay. And so they participate, when they actively participate in trading and controlling trade to increase their wealth, okay. the, the, the word eventually for that, we, we call it mercantilism, the system. Okay. So they were in between Egypt, Persia, and Byzantium, right? So, so they're also in between Rome as well. Okay. So this method of controlling this trade and increasing their own wealth, the Europeans found that pretty resourceful. They found it very useful. And so they started implementing a system themselves as well. Okay. So that's mercantilism, a system of government-sponsored international business ventures. Oh, I gotta change that. I gotta change that. I gotta change that definition. Once again, grade 10, these slides are old. old and uh, they need updating because I've gotten so much better and I've learned so much more I also got older yes I did yes. mercantilism to explain to you feel free to cross it out on your notes package but mercantilism is when the mother country conducts trade and tries to increase in its own wealth right you're increasing your own wealth that's kind of the sparks in the notes version. <laughs> so almost a thousand years later, when these European monarchs, these kingdoms are in a much stronger position, they you know scour the globe for these financial economic opportunities. They're looking for new land, so that's imperialism. They're trying to expand their empire to gain valuable resources and, and gain economically, financially, right? That's mercantilism. Okay. Various companies start to, to propagate themselves and, and rise up. So you have the Dutch Trading Company, but you also have the British, British East India Company. How many of you have seen Pirates of the Caribbean? Okay. Should be all of us. So, how many of you are aware that the British government officials that Jack Sparrow is always running from, 
They're actually from the British East India Trading Company, right? They're a little bit more subtle. And if you don't know a lot about, you know, this history, maybe you won't pick that up. But the entire series is essentially the British East India Trading Company trying to, you know, increase its own position. That's why we don't bring backpacks into the classroom because they're tripping hazards what or slipping doing? hazards. You put them in your locker. Okay. So the British East India Trading Company, you know, again, they're expanding the influence of the British monarch of the crown. They're expanding their sphere of influence, their capacity to engage in the world, both economically, politically, financially, however they might. And early relationships with the European empires that expanded and indigenous peoples not all but some groups there was you know a bit of a positive respectful treatment you know i want to say the history of thanksgiving is based on the this this fact that when europeans came to north america and didn't know how to survive in this extreme climate didn't know how to survive in this new new i guess biome that they're a part of this new climate this new environment different animals different way of life they relied heavily upon indigenous people to teach them how to survive, to give them various skills. Whereas with them, the Europeans brought advanced technology, so metal tools and, and, and weapons and other things that were horrible for indigenous people, like alcohol, right? And you're laughing, but it's true. Like, uh, you know, I was reading an article about how the RCMP saved the Blackfoot people by making sure that within Canada's borders, they banned alcohol and right, the trade of it, particularly by Americans who were coming north and selling it to the Blackfoot or indigenous groups to make money. Right? But there are many pros and cons, right? The, the, the European people also brought different types of diseases, diseases as mentioned in that video, that were very ruthless, that wiped out many Europeans, many other groups of people. Right, and they, they, those same diseases did the exact same thing to the indigenous people. There's something else I wanted to comment about that video. That's okay. Um, anyways, Eurocentrism, another key word you'll need to know is this belief that the European worldview and way of life and engaging in the world is superior to all others. And you know, without a doubt, some people would have engaged in that. But again, something they won't teach you in, in this course is that, uh, and I've learned through other sources, is that when people migrated from Europe to North America, there were many instances of European settlers who would flee their European way of life and they wanted to go and live with indigenous tribes, right? They wanted to be adopted by them and to live out let's just say in the wilderness with indigenous people, maybe on their own as well to some extent. And from these historians, I've learned that there's never any stories of the other way around. There, there was very, very rare early on that there were any indigenous people that thought, wow, let's go live like the European people do, right? With their systems of government and, and the way things were structured, their way of life in general. More people found it appealing to you know, live a life where you're more connected to nature, kind of living there. You're, you're nestled into a community, a family, a tribe, and you have those supports. And, and, you know, so although we focus on the Eurocentric aspect of this experience of this contact, you know, there's another important detail to know that many European people did not want to live a European way of life once they got here. You know, they much rather would have been living in a tribe. I think the next slide we will save. We'll, we'll save the rest of the stuff. Thank you.